Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another very big canister filter. This one is the EFX 600 Aquamanta and this is marketed by Maidenhead Aquatics in the UK. Now Maidenhead Aquatics are a huge chain of shops that go all the way up and down the country and I'm old enough to remember when they only had one store and now they're in pretty much every garden center. And they've got to the point where they're actually producing their own filter. So today we're going to take a look at the biggest one, which is the AFX 600, suitable apparently for up to 600 litres. Might be right looking at the size of this thing, and we'll see what we think. Okay, now relevant links will be in the video description and in the pinned comment, as always. But I'll just run through a few facts and figures before we take the top off and have a look inside, because that's something that I quite often forget to do until the very end of the video. I like to try and do it at the start, but my memory being what it is, sometimes won't allow for that. So, this is one of four different models. So we've got a 200, 300, a 400, and a 600. And this 600 model has actually got quite an insane flow rate. Well, not insane, but very high compared to a lot of other canister filters. This is apparently 2,700 litres per hour which is roughly 710 US gallons per hour. Obviously, you can reduce that by probably 40-50% by the time you get all the pipes and all the filters set up, but that's still a very good flow rate from this filter. Now, when this arrived, I did have a brief look in here, and what I saw doesn't seem to jive with the information that is on Maidenhead's website. So this is how they explain that this filter works. They basically say that the water goes down central tube into the bottom of the filter where it spreads out and then rises up through the trays before being drawn out through the pump back into the tank. And this filter was sent to me by a guy called Peter who actually did have this set up and running. He said he's removed a couple of things but he's left it more or less as it comes set up based on what it says here. So basically the water goes into the bottom, it then rises through a coarse foam, which is good. Then it goes into the carbon, which isn't so good. Ideally, that one would be in the last part. Um, then it goes through media, and then it goes through a medium foam. Then it goes through a phosphate removal pad, and then finally, white wool filter pad. Obviously, that's just going to concentrate all the crap in your media clogging it up, making it inefficient. So really the way they explain that it should work, won't work, not efficiently. And when I take the top off, you'll see that that information there is cockeyed because I can't see how it could possibly flow up through these trays. Let's take a look. Okay, now I actually think this is quite a well-made filter. Got a nice big priming button on the top there to help you to get the pump going. It's not just a little rod that you have to lift up and down. That's solid. The fittings are reasonably solid. The clasps are okay. And in a similar way to the Fluval 06 series, you have these side clasps here. You just lift up to break the seal and that allows the top to easily lift off. Okay, now here's where it doesn't jive with what's written on the website because the water obviously comes in here. You've got a one-way valve there. See that open there? So the water can only come out of there. Water has to just pour into here. And if you add to that, the fact that that is where the water is drawn out of the filter and that marries up with that, and that's got a rubber seal on, that means that the water actually comes up the pipe, not down it. So in reality, the water pours into here first, then it goes down through the trays, and then it rises back up through this tube, into the pump, back into your tank. 
Now just to understand the basics of how the water flows through any filter is absolutely essential. So hopefully this video will help you if you've been a little bit confused about what was written on the website. So in here we've got four trays and those trays are very big. I'll get onto the design of this in a moment. But in the top there, we've got the plastic balls. In the second tray, we've got what looks like grow stones. Now I think that should actually be ceramic media in here, but this is actually a sintered glass. It's quite brittle, but it is very porous. It's a decent media. Uh, obviously not enough of it though. Then in the next tray down, we've got a fine pad. And then in the very bottom tray, we've got the phosphate removal pad. And another fine pad. As well as a random piece of pipe there. And I'm not quite sure what that is in there for. Yeah, I don't think that's actually meant to be in there but it's not doing any harm and it did come set up like that. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And now we've got an empty container. Obviously because the water flows down, we can't put any pre-filter material in there like old ceramic rings or anything like that. So we're just gonna to have to leave that as it is. Well, there you go. We've got four really big media trays full of all sorts in a really random order. Now that we know which way the water actually flows through this filter, we can set it up properly. Basically, we're going to set it up with the top tray being coarse, medium and fine foams. Trays underneath that for media. This one's going to cost me a lot to set up. And this is something that is a real problem. When you need to take the foams out, you've got to either pull this handle off and then refit it, or you've got to kind of bend the forms over the top of this central tube, which is really awkward. The carrying handle, instead of just being straight, goes around the central tube, which to me is a stupid design. Why not just offset that central tube and have a straight carrying handle? Instead of something that it just doesn't carry right. You know, you've kind of got to carry it with two hands. It's, it's an awful design. Now that's not going to affect how the filter actually works or how efficient it is, but as a design feature or more appropriately, as a design fault, that's sackless. Okay, that gives us this media which we're not going to use. The phosphate pad, we might use that, but it's actually been used before. I don't know how long these things last. I don't know how long it's been used. So I'll just simply send this one back in the box. We won't use it in this setup. We've got two fine pads. We only need one. So that is what we're keeping from the original setup. One fine pad. So this filter would have also come with a coarse and a medium pad from the manufacturer. When it came up to me from Peter, he didn't have those, they'd worn out, so he didn't want to send anything that was absolutely knackered. That's why there's no coarse and medium in here. We will be putting one in though. So we're gonna work from the top down. So that's number four. Three. Two and one. So this is the one that's going to take the water first. This is the one that sits in the top of our filter. So in the top, we're going to have a coarse pad, then a medium pad, then our fine pad. Now I've already cut a coarse and a medium pad just from pond foam. They've got the bumps on. So when the water comes in laden with muck, you've got a really good contact surface area there. Underneath that, you've got the medium pad. Again, it's got a really good contact surface area. It should be a long time before these get blocked. So they will go in above our fine pad. 
which because of the ridiculous nature of this handle is a real pain in the backside to get in. and coarse. Now if you notice there is a little bit of room above that coarse pad and you might be thinking you could get another coarse pad on top of there but I would rather just go with one and have it really full of muck. Right now it's time to fill these with a ferocious amount of filter media. Because this is a big canister filter we're using the Biohome Ultimate for reasons of wanting a full cycle. So I'll take these trays away to my scale, fill them, and I'll let you know how much they hold. Looking at it, I would guesstimate at somewhere around about two to two and a half kilos, but we'll find out in a minute. Right, I actually underestimated just how much these trays would hold. Each one actually takes quite easily 2.7 kilos of Biohome Ultimate. And that's just short of six pounds for you guys in America. That's a lot of media per tray. So what does that work out at? 2.7 times 3 equals just over 8 kilos of media in this filter. Which is... Oh, that can't be right. Yeah, over 17 and a half pounds of media in that filter. And bear in mind that the FX6, which is another really big well-known filter, only takes five kilos of media, which is about 11 pound. That holds way more than an FX6. It's got a better turnover rate. The one thing that lets it down though, is not necessarily the direction of flow because that's not much of a problem. It's the design of those stupid handles. That's what lets it down for me. But if you're looking for pure performance, God, having eight kilos of media in there, that makes it suitable for more than the company says, which is always good. All right, then let's get these trays dropped back into here, get the top on, and then I shall give you some closing thoughts and a few more facts and figures. Lifting that up is a little bit more awkward than it should be. It's not a deal breaker though. You know, that is okay, you can still support it. You know, there's 2.7 kilos of media in there and it's holding solid. Okay, so from the top down, this is what it hits first. Coarse, medium and fine pad followed by three trays of Biohome Ultimate. And to be honest, you can see we could probably squeeze a bit more media in there. That's the level that the other one sits at. So you could possibly get up to three kilos in each tray, which is absolutely phenomenal. And that now is one really heavy, high output, high efficiency, well made canister filter. I am impressed by this because this is the first time I've actually had a close look at one of these Maidenhead filters, sorry, one of the Aquamanta filters through Maidenhead. I really do like it. And even the pipes inside where the water is drawn up it's a big diameter pipe. Where the water comes into the filter, it's a big diameter pipe. It looks about an inch, maybe it's a little bit more. And that is not gonna restrict the flow very much. So you're gonna get a really high output. So for something like a cichlid tank, a marine tank, a predator tank, something that needs a canny bit of flow and a lot of filtering capacity, this is a very good choice. A very good choice. 
I'm really pleased with this. I don't mind spending the time, effort and money to get all that information collated into one place for you guys because it is so important. Even if you only take something like the direction of flow from any of these videos or any of the information I've got on the website, that is good because if you don't want to set it up like I've set it up, at least you will know which direction the water actually flows. If I'd gone off the website for this without actually looking at how the water truly does flow through it, I would have easily set this up the wrong way around. All the crap would have filled up the media, making it really inefficient, and it would have wasted not only the cost of the filter, but also the cost of all the media as well. So setting filters up properly is so important. And that's why I kind of devoted this channel to making sure that you do set your filters up properly. Right now, some facts and figures. And when we're talking about the suitability of this for a certain size of aquarium, we're talking about the full cycle, which is the aerobic part and the anaerobic part of the nitrogen cycle. So that is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, very low nitrate. That is the whole filter working properly. So, Maidenhead say that this is suitable for up to 600 litres. They don't say whether that's a heavily stocked tank or a normally stocked tank. Just up to 600 litres. But given the fact that we've managed to get 8 kilos of Biohome Ultimate in there, that actually makes this thing suitable for a full cycle for an aquarium up to 800 litres, which is a big, big aquarium. For you guys in America, that's 210 gallons. If the tank was heavily stocked, so if it was a marine tank or a predator tank or a cichlid tank, this should enable a full cycle for a tank of up to 400 litres, which is about 105 US gallons. So this is a real powerhouse, a real powerhouse. And when you see that this holds eight kilos and apparently is suitable for 600 litres, and you see that the FX6 holds five kilos and is apparently suitable for 1500 litres, you can see why people end up being terribly confused because none of the manufacturers can agree on how much their filters will actually treat or what they're actually treating for. Will they ensure that you just get zero ammonia and zero nitrite? Are they just working on an ammonia figure? Or are they taking the whole cycle into account, which is what we do, which is the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate reduction? Nobody knows because it isn't specified. Hopefully, these videos that I'm making will help to cut through some of that fog and clear the picture a little bit for you. If you've got a filter you want to send, by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description and also in the pinned comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.